I am on a cruise right now. And as you know, I'm an economist, can't stop thinking about these things. So this video, we're going to talk about 10 ways that cruise lines do what economists call price discriminate, which is figure out different ways to charge customers different amounts of prices so that different customers pay different prices for the same thing. We're going to do some touring around the ship while I talk through this. I found a nice little nook that's kind of quiet on this uh, Wednesday morning to talk through. So price discrimination for cruise ships is incredibly valuable because if they had to charge one price for all customers, they could either try to target the higher end customers or those with who are more price sensitive, those who are going to budget a lower amount towards cruising, but by being able to charge different prices to each customer based on their willingness to pay, cruise lines can make a little bit more money. Uh, you know, these are public companies, right? The shareholders are investing in them in order to make profits. And from a functionality standpoint, right? cruise lines just went through COVID. They're trying to get back to profitability right now. So figuring out the ways to do that, it's pretty crucial. So, the first way that cruise lines can price discriminate, the first way that we'll discuss, is through the type of ship and the prices offered on different types of ships. So cruise lines are consistently coming out with newer, bigger ships that have different amenities, and the newer ships will often cost a little bit more. Well, those who really value this newer ship, the newer experiences, they'll go on that. Those who are perhaps a little bit more on a budget can choose the older ones. It's one way for cruise lines to discriminate based on consumer preferences. So that's, that's certainly one way, and I know I'm on a Carnival ship right now, and they absolutely do that. Different ships cost different prices. And <clears throat> I myself, there have been times where we've done the newer one to pay a little bit more, and we've also then done one kind of quite a bit cheaper. So that's one of the first ways. It's not even within the same ship. It's literally what type of ship are you going on? A second key way that cruise lines price discriminate is through the cabin that you choose. So within ships, you'll have four general types of cabins that I'll discuss. You could get a little bit more nitpicky on this, but you have inside cabins where there is no window at all. You are just inside the ship. You have ocean view cabins. So much like you would, much like it would discuss, uh, you've got a window viewing the ocean. You have balconies. So you literally have a balcony out on the ocean. And then you have suites, which are a little bit bigger. And these different rooms come with different prices. Uh, as you would expect, the inside room with no window is the cheapest, and the ocean view is a little more expensive than the balcony and then the suite. And this allows uh, the cruise lines for essentially the same cost to cater to customers who are willing to spend a little bit more because they'd really like a balcony or a suite, and those who are perfectly okay paying less or can only pay less, right? They can only afford a smaller amount to go with an inside cabin or an ocean view cabin. So that's a key way that firms are able to kind of offer different customers different prices for, for what the cost them the same amount of money. A third key way that cruise lines price discriminate is with their drinks package. So and I'll even broaden it to say with drinks in general. On the ship, there are some drinks included, right? There's waters, there's lemonades, there's some coffees and teas that are just included in the price. But what's not included are your soft drinks and your alcoholic beverages. And then sometimes some places will have specialty coffees. Um, some of the cruise lines, I think, have uh, Starbucks or even the chains on there. Those will cost a little bit more for those who, you know, they need their, they need their Starbucks, right? And... So what we see with the cruise lines on this is those who are much more price sensitive could perhaps come on and then drink without having to spend extra on alcohol or soda. Those who want their soft drinks or their beer or their wine or their liquor, right? They, they could pay a little bit more. Now within the drinks package, there's actually another interesting way that firms price discriminate, charging different amounts for the same product. And that's with package deals on the beverages. Uh, cruise lines will offer 
package deals where if you pay ahead of time, you could say get unlimited sodas for some price or unlimited alcoholic beverages for some much larger price. And that allows customers to think through, well, how much might I drink? Might this be worth it for me to get a package where there's unlimited soda or unlimited alcohol? Um, or would it be smarter not to? You know, so it's a way cruise lines can help to, once again, price discriminate, extract a little bit more from the customers who are willing to pay more. For those who are not willing to pay that, they can still come on the ship. So the cruise line's still making some revenue. Fourth way that cruise lines price discriminate is with their shore excursions. So when you book a cruise, often part of the reason I've liked cruising, one, well, it's, it's incredibly fun, but it's also reasonably affordable if you're if you're looking around a little bit. Um, I mean, for a family, you get your accommodations and your meals included with some entertainment, all for one price, which is can be really affordable. Uh, the shore excursions can actually be really expensive. They can add on quite a bit. So cruise, cruises will go to different ports. This, the cruise I'm on, it's a, it's a four night and it goes to Key West. We went there yesterday and today we're going to Cozumel. Sometimes the shore excursions can literally add, you know, a hundred dollars or more for each port you go to if you want to engage in these various excursions. Some of the cruises can I mean, literally be three, four, five hundred dollars for the price of the cruise, and you could spend as much on shore excursions if you were so inclined. And this is a key way that cruise lines can price discriminate. Those who are a little bit more price sensitive, um, maybe they book the cruise, they don't do the the shore excursions. So maybe those who are a little bit more price sensitive, they book the cruise, but they don't do shore excursion. Those who the price isn't as big of a factor, they they could go ahead and do both. The cruise lines can get the revenue from both sets of customers, ensuring those with tighter budgets are still cruising and those who have the money and want to do the excursions can just go ahead and do the shore excursions, pay for them. The cruise line gets the additional revenue from the shore excursions. Number five way, cruise lines charge different prices to different customers. It's with the specialty restaurants. So specialty dining is an interesting concept on the cruise ship. So all cruise ships have a main dining room. The main dining room, in my opinion, is pretty fantastic. I mean, it's pretty elegant and fancy, and the food is pretty good. But then there are also specialty restaurants where you can spend an additional amount, and different cruise lines will have different types of specialty restaurants. Most of them will have a steakhouse. Some would have a seafood place. I've been on Norwegian cruises where they had a French restaurant and an Italian restaurant. And the specialty restaurants are just like that. They're, they specialize in this, this various uh, type of food. And if you're willing to pay a little bit more, you can get the specialty restaurant. Many people are not, but many people are. This allows the cruise line to, once again, make some additional revenue from those willing to pay a little bit more on their vacations. A sixth way that cruise lines price discriminate, and really price discrimination defined, it's charging different prices for the exact same product. This is probably the purest or one of the purest forms of price discrimination, and that's seasonal pricing or charging different prices for different days, different dates within the calendar year. So I'm on this, I'm recording this on uh, June 7th. It's a cruise that goes went the 5th through the 9th of June. This cruise is a little bit more expensive than if I'd gone in the really off-peak times like, you know, January, February, October, November. But it's less expensive than if it's a month later, because while a lot of kids are out of school in early June, not everybody's out of school by now. So that makes it a little bit cheaper. And, you know, there are some times like the holiday times where cruises can, there's a, there's a huge demand for them. So cruise lines could charge quite a bit more. So just looking at the calendar, you'll often find the exact same cruise on various ships and you'll go to the date and the prices will be dramatically different. Another way that cruise lines price discriminate is by their add-ons that they sell and two in particular that will highlight are the spa and the arcade. So there's a spa and an arcade on board. If you want to use those, you've got to pay a little bit extra. 
So once again, you can get on the ship, you can have a perfectly wonderful time, never going to the spa, never going to the arcade. But if you want to engage with that, if you'd like to use the arcade, if you'd like to use the spa, it will cost a little bit more. Another way cruise lines are able to get customers on board who are on a tighter budget and the willingness to pay is, is, is set a little bit lower. And, you know, once you do that, though, you kind of have to offer that to everybody, but you can offer these additional services that cost a little bit more. Those who uh, money isn't quite as big of an object or they're budgeting this for their vacation can go ahead and take advantage of the arcade or the spa. Another way that firms price discriminate, charge different prices to different customers for the exact same product is different pricing based on when you buy the cruise in relation to when it sails. So this one to me is fascinating because you'll hear a lot of cruise experts saying buying early is the absolute best thing to do. And really, you know, there's a lot of availability there. So that, that makes some sense. However, if a cruise isn't selling very well, cruise lines can be dynamic with the pricing and could lower the prices a little bit in order to sell the cabins. And boy, we really saw that right after COVID when you could have gotten some amazing deals on cruises for the routes that hadn't sold as much. Um, I mean, incredible fares that you're not seeing anymore. But so, you know, buying super early, maybe you get a great deal. If you wait to the last minute, um, it might cost a lot more. And on the screen, I'll show a couple examples of cruises that are going, you know, just a few days before we're, we're dropping this video. And you can see the pricing on this can be quite a bit more than comparable cruises that are a few months out. But on the flip side, if a cruise isn't selling and they have a lot of extra cabins available a week before, you might get an incredible deal. So cruise lines have the ability to be dynamic in their pricing, and this could be a huge benefit for the cruise lines in order to sell their inventory, or if they are selling out their inventory to make as much money as they can with those last kind of less cabins available. Another way firms price discriminate, charging different prices based on age or location. So some cruise lines w could give a senior discount. Cruise lines can charge less for children to come on board. And they could charge different prices based on where you are located. I know entering in information when looking at cruises, they ask what state I'm from. The reason, could there be discounts based on the particular state? The final way that we'll talk about for price discrimination, and this to me is a really interesting one, is firms can price discriminate based on getting the specific data on you. Uh, this is easier for them to do if you're a repeat customer. But once you have cruised with the cruise line, they're going to have information on you. And they might use this information to craft an offer that they think will be profitable for them and that you might take. As many who watch the channel know, um, I enjoy, I really enjoy playing poker. I also I like playing blackjack too. It's basically a break even game if you know the strategy. And so the first time I was on a carnival cruise, I played some blackjack. Well, then I started to get offers from them based on the fact that I played in the casino. These are specialized offers. These aren't available to everybody else. This is just to me and those who you know, I played in the casino, so they figure, okay, if I'm going to play in the casino a little bit, they can give me a different deal, a better deal to come onto the ship in the first place, figuring, okay, they'll get a better deal. They're thinking on average, if I play some amount of black, they'll get that extra revenue back because they're um, on the lower price that they're giving me. I, you know, that's certainly their assumption when they're, when they're making that particular offer. So that's something that they could do, but they could track a lot about you as you cruise and they could use that information to figure out what might they want to do in terms of a specific offer in order to once again their goal make as much money as they can uh, while providing a good cruise experience for you so hope you enjoyed this video uh, my name is matt rosu I'm dean of the sigmund wise school of business and a professor of economics at susquehanna university i enjoy making videos that are fun and accessible that teach economics. So if you like this, please click like and subscribe to the channel. I'd appreciate it. And until next time, I'll see you in the next video.